knew it was coming. And I knew that just staying here huddled wasn't going to work. Grabbing her eight-year-old son, Dominic, five-year-old daughter, Reese, she dove into the basement. My name is Doc Kinley. I used to be a bartender, and now I bring clean water to the world. The water is not going to be making you feel sick to your stomach. Hey. Snyder, buzz, long slap shot, saved by Pushkin. The U.S. team is depending a little bit too much now on Jim Craig. He's making too many good saves. Around the order! He's a member of the New York Yankees, and Jim Abbott pitches a no-hitter against the Cleveland Indians. The young man from Michigan would have his crowning moment as a Major League pitcher. And the ground ball is short for Marty. He did it! He did it! That your only limitations in life are the ones that you set on yourself. You're only limited by you. And I'm limitless. You, you can't tell me boundaries. You know, I, I firmly believe that's what makes pro athletes pro athletes. CEOs and, and millionaires millionaires because they don't know limits. They aren't scared to step outside the box and outside the boundaries and push themselves. That's what we need to do. You see, when we blame other people, when we blame past, it doesn't move us forward. It slows us down. And true leaders, and all of you are leaders in this room, true leaders don't blame other people. I have found walking through every door, believing that I'm going to go through the door, or jump out the window, I'm going to learn how to fly on the way down. And you want to know, I have always had my best successes. And so I wholeheartedly believe in the belief that all of us have the right to be there, ask for what we want, we all can be rich, we could all put our dagger in the sand or whatever that thing is called and say, that's me, I'm going for it, what the heck. We are moving into places and positions of power and leadership and it is happening and I have a wish. I am old enough to make this wish. I'm 60 years old, okay, I'm 52, but if you say 60, you get more compliments. <laughs> I crossed the line of confidence and I became arrogant. I got to the University of Minnesota. I met my first teammate that went something like this. What's up, dog? My name is Walt Bond, all state from Chicago. In other words, the Messiah has arrived. <laughs> my teammate stood up and said this. What's your name again? <laughs> Walt Bond, all state from Chicago. That's not bad, but my name is Willie Burton, all American from Detroit, Michigan. All American. Is that like a small town or something? And flying on this flight, I was sitting in an aisle seat and there's an empty seat and then the person against the window, his name was Robert, but he said, Tom, you can call me Bob. I said, great, Bob, are you going home or going to work? Well, I'm heading home, Tom. And I said, Bob, what do you do? And had some reading material in his hands, and so what he did, he heard the third question, but he paused to answer it, and he put his reading material away, and he slumped back in his seat, and he just dropped his shoulders, released a large sigh, and said in response to my question, he said, Tom, I, uh, I sell insurance, uh, property and casualty. And after talking with Bob for about 10 more minutes, I realized he didn't have a clue what he did. You see, Bob saw himself as a paper pusher. He's the guy that filled out a bunch of policies, and to be quite honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, it wearied him. And what he failed to realize is that he was a man that allowed mothers and fathers to take their children and tuck them in bed at nighttime, pulling a sheet right up under their chin and kissing them on the cheek or the forehead and saying the words, I love you. Sleep well. 
Because there's a roof over their head. No, you see what Bob does, ladies and gentlemen? He puts families back together, and yet he didn't even get it. We have to celebrate our mistakes. I know that sounds like something you learn in school. You know, come on, kids, we have to, it's okay to make mistakes. But when we get older, we don't like to celebrate those mistakes. And yet we all make them all the time. And I don't even have a great story. Well, I have one story about this, but it's not really that related to this. I mean, it, it is, but like we all mess up sometimes. You know when a person messes up and then they don't admit it and everybody else knows? Some people will say, don't admit your mistakes. You know that old saying, don't let them see a sweat. You know something? They see us sweating before we even know we're sweating. The best leaders, the best service providers are the ones that go, check this out. <laughs> you know, those are the people you go, you rock. In closing, let me tell you how you're all feeling today. Squares, hands up. You thought this was a pretty good day. You don't really like motivational speakers, but you thought we all did a pretty good job, but you do wish there had been a couple of slides. <laughs> Triangles, I know what you're thinking about me right now. You've been thinking for three hours. I wonder how much they paid her. Circles, hands up. You want my job. And where's the circle women? Hands up. You love this top, don't you? You think this is... <laughs> and squiggles, squiggles, hands up. You're thinking somewhere in this place there's got to be a bar open right now. And I finished my tour and I made my way back home and I was sitting in my family room and it was the first time I'd experienced any peace or quiet in literally months. And I remember thinking to myself, why me? You know, what separated me from the pack of all these people who wanted to win this? There were 250,000 people who applied. And I think really there were three main reasons and I think these are why people are successful, especially in the real estate business. One, it's a term called practical execution. In the real world, it's about getting the job done. Secondly, it's about agility. Agility is probably the best trait we can bring to the table in the real estate business. Yet so many of us are oblivious to it. So many of us have those blinders on. They stay in that comfort zone. You know, they've been doing this for 20 years, 30 years, and that's the way they're going to continue to do this. And lastly, it's about risk. It's about understanding risk, respecting risk, and converting risk into success. Uh, I snuck up on this mom and her daughter in a, in a slum in, in Kampala. We had just helped them uh, get clean water and I didn't want them to see me because I saw how much fun they were having just sitting on their porch in the morning drinking water. And they had nothing. They lived in one of the worst slums and trash dumps that I've ever seen. And this is what I saw. And this is what I think about of all the different countries I've traveled to. I don't remember you know, sickly faces and kids with flies in their eyes and not feeling good and just upset with life in general. When I think about all the places I've been and the hard places I've been, these are the faces that I see and remember. And we come back here sometimes and it's difficult for me because we, we get stuck in a traffic jam too long or our, our phones aren't downloading or emails fast enough and we get pissed off about that. And then I remember quickly them we had nothing, and that they're so content and happy with life. And y'all, I, I just, I hope that, that, that y'all could see that this, this life is so much more than just the day-to-day -day grind and the bottom line, but it's all about the people that make life worth living. So y'all, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. God bless you.